This is morning for us. We're in just outside of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We had a couple things go on last night. So we had a, an issue with our battery, our inverter and our um, outlet where I, I just overloaded. I think we, we fried the, what do they call it? The power strip. Yeah. Anyway, our, our battery monitor was beeping and it was all kinds of crazy. Um, but on a good note, we also got a shower, which was awesome. Um, those happen once every three or four days, give or take. And, um, and we don't know where we're going today, but we're going somewhere because we can't stay. So we're going to go figure it out. We're near Amish country. And so we're going to go explore around the area of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, as we slowly make our way north toward the Hudson Valley um, over the next couple of days. Well, we just encountered our first uh, covered bridge. We are in the land of low clearance. Yes, we are. And mm -hmm. they're not always marked on all stays. We use all stays to find these things. And we've seen a lot of them that are not marked at all. So it's just par for the course for having to turn around. And yep. there's traffic. That's yep. awesome. This one's You should 10. know I can't go. This one's 10-6. And we are 11-6. So... So we're turning around. And then we gotta figure out how we're gonna... I called that lady a piece of pooty. I caught myself. I guess she uh, yeah. expected us to know where all the cover birds Google's are. a piece of pooty as well. Because Google doesn't take into consideration driving a truck camper. We have good clearance. It's 11 and a half feet. A lot of truck campers, especially newer ones, are a lot higher than that. Well, a little higher than that. But, yeah, Google doesn't care what we're driving. All the traffic turned back at that light. That's where I'm going to go. Good rule of thumb when you're driving and all the people turn one way, there's a good chance you should turn that way too. But we were in the front and everybody turned behind me so I couldn't see everybody turn in front of me and make that decision. So now I'll make that decision. During our whirlwind tour of Amish country, uh, we found one place called Bird in Hand. Maybe you've heard of it. I've never heard of it except in the expression, a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. Um, so this is a pretty cool place and it's not at all what I expected of Amish country. I'm not going to say what I did expect because I don't want to sound like an idiot, but I've seen some movies I think that gave me an idea. Anyway, we're in this cute little town. There's a bakery. Lindsay wants to go get some bread. We're going to look for bread. And there is a farmer's market, but it is closed because we're here on a Monday. So boohoo for us and our yeah, lack of otherwise planning. Otherwise we would take you on the farmer's market, but... But maybe we'll find another one somewhere. Yeah. We're going to spend the day touring several different towns and uh, see what we see and do what we do and um, wander. That's what we do best. We wander. Mm -hmm. Do we know where we're sleeping tonight? Nope. No, no idea. idea. <laughs> That's not a bird in hand. <laughs> bird in hand would know where you're sleeping. <laughs> Two in the bush means we got we'll all kinds of somewhere. adventure. We'll find somewhere. We'll figure it out. Yeah. All right, let's do it. That was a disappointment. You probably don't know this, but <laughs> Lindsay is a sourdough bread snob. And this was happening before the pandemic when everybody started to do their own sourdough. Lindsay had a starter from where? From Wyoming? I know, remember, because that one died. But she started doing all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I started like, well making over, my own sourdough well over starter a over a year ago. Because so. sourdough is the kind of bread that's good for her stomach, and so she's like, I'll just learn to make my own. But real sourdough does not have yeast in it. You do not put yeast in it to and bake it. It's made from a starter. If you see sourdough bread in a store and you read the ingredients and it has yeast in it, it's not real sourdough. So I told you she's a snob. But, <laughs> but it's, it's good to know. <laughs> it's good to know. Trader Joe's actually has real sourdough. They're like one of the only stores that I've seen that has actual real sourdough. We have a but, puppy. I don't yeah. know if you know that. But I don't know if there's... I, I want to buy from like a real bakery. That was like a fake bakery. Yeah, we don't, we're not going to badmouth <laughs> things. We <didn't>, only <laughs> it things... was like really fancy... And yeah, no. only things we badmouth is Washington D.C. I want to buy from like, you be, know, be kind. Sorry, but I want to buy from like a real homemade, like you know, country, like family-owned-looking, old-fashioned kind of store. 
I thought it was going to be that. But. So that's what we're going to be looking for. And our next stop, you're really going <laughs> to love this if you're as immature as I am. We are on our way to Intercourse. Intercourse, Pennsylvania. It's just down the road. You've probably heard of it. You've probably heard of it. Um, it does have double meaning. I mean, yeah. Okay, so. good old... See, I told you I'm, I'm not mature. I can't handle saying the, saying the word intercourse without laughing. That's like Chuck Town. <laughs> Chuck Town. Chuck Town intercourse. Man, this is why you got to travel because you, you go, go to these places you never really knew you'd have such fun. Anyway, so we're going to inter... <laughs> Stop. I can't do it. We're going to go drive down the road. We're going I'll to intercourse, okay? <laughs> We're going to go see what's there. I even laugh when you say it. It's going to be my intercourse. We're going to intercourse. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's so funny. I don't know either. But we're going. All right. We'll be back later. <laughs> this one's on the bank. Lindsay. I am a little bit disappointed, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Why? Intercourse just was not what I expected it to be. What did you expect it to be? I can't say that without laughing. Oh my gosh. Stop. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. We just like kind of breezed through there. There wasn't a lot of like, I mean there were little shops and things. It was a tiny things, little but, town, yeah. But yeah, so we are back on the 30 headed toward Lancaster and there's this really beautiful little loop. I'm going to put it on a map for you to show you kind of the towns in southern Lancaster County. Lancaster County is where you want to go if you want to see the Pennsylvania Amish because that's where all these little towns are and we've seen so many people in buggies and we've seen um, so many houses that had the laundry out drying and we saw a guy plowing plowing a field, field yeah. with his horses and so there's a lot of I mean truly authentic life here Amish life so if you're interested this is the place to come for sure our plan is to loop back into Lancaster and then we're going to go, we got some errands to run, but then we're going to run up into the northern area of Lancaster County a little bit. There's a couple more towns that we'll visit and then we're going to make our way out. Really, really brief. It's kind of what, I, I didn't know what to expect and so yeah, I'm not neither. like one way or the other. Um, and the weather's not terribly awesome right now, so um, it's just kind of a cruising day. Yeah, it's been nice so far. Pennsylvania's just been like amazing, it's so beautiful. I've loved everywhere we've been here. It's just blown me away. Yeah. I don't know about northern Pennsylvania. I like that farm. Hey Lindsay, you know where we are right now? We're in paradise. We are in paradise. I love the names for the towns around here. Bird in Hand, Paradise, eh, <laughs> I can't say. They just got some cool names. Um, but I think this is what Guns N' Roses was singing about back when I was a kid, and you were like a littler kid, it was Paradise City. I think, I'm pretty sure they were talking about Paradise City, Pennsylvania, in the heart of Lancaster County, Amish country take me down to the paradise city where the grass is green and the girls are well I don't know that, that you can judge one Amish woman from another because I mean they're all they dress alike to not in, invite pride into their lives so I don't know how they rated and whether they were pretty or not but I really do think I think paradise Pennsylvania is what Guns N' Roses was singing about what do you think uh, I'm not sure about that. Another instance of, <laughs> I just feel with my gut, sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. I'm okay with being wrong sometimes. It's just, you know, I like to be right more than I'm wrong. But I feel really, oh I feel really, really right about this. <laughs> okay, well maybe it is what they're singing about. Look at that, a big windmill. Paradise. Dutch Delights. Paradise City. 
take me down to the... Don't, YouTube, don't do it. Don't, don't yep. ding me. Don't ding me, YouTube. Can't sing it. We have just pulled into the town of... You mean Lidditz? Lidditz. Lidditz. Why is that so hard for me I mean, to say? I think it's pronounced Lidditz. So you're saying you could be wrong? I could be wrong. Okay, so I could be right. Could be Lidditz. Lidditz. L I T I T I T Z. This is like no. the Mississippi. But remember, I think it's Lidditz. You remember trying to spell Mississippi? Yeah. Can we try that again? No. M I. S S I S S I S S I P P I Mississippi. Too many S's. <laughs> I'm gonna link to that video because that no. was. No. Lindsay doesn't it's like embarrassing. it. Embarrassing. I thought it was great. It was our first, second week out on the road, and uh, she was cute. Her Southern Belle trying to spell Mississippi. Anyway, we're in this town, and the one thing they're really known for is their pretzels. The first commercial pretzel sale place in America per a website that maybe not be that reputable. But anyway, we are going to go check out this pretzel factory because that's one thing Lindsay eats. In fact, she she's eating them right now. I crap you not. So we're going to go stop by and get a pretzel. But the soft ones are better. And then we're going to tell you when we're eating the pretzel how we're going to combine the flavor of the pretzel with another really awesome flavor oh, that just happens yeah. to be within about a half an hour from here. If you know this area, you probably know what we're talking about. But if you don't know the area, you're in for a real sweet and delicious treat. That's another hint about where we're going. So excited. Never thought I'd be here at the pretzel place or at the place we're going to next. So we'll keep you in suspense. For us, it'll be a 45 minute suspense. For you, it's right now. So, I forgot to mention, Lindsay, in addition to being a sourdough connoisseur slash snob, is also a pretzel maker. You made pretzels. Or... I made pretzel bites. Well, it's the same thing. So <laughs> tell us about the process of pretzels and what makes them different. Oh, well, pretzels make, I mean, they're pretzels because you boil them in baking soda water. That's what gives them, I guess, the taste that they have. Yeah. So... They're good. They're easy to make. They're not hard to make. You just... I made sourdough pretzels, so I basically made yeah. the dough like I would bread. I let it sit overnight and ferment, and then they rose, and then I made them in the, like, long tubes, I guess, or I rolled them into long strips, and then I cut them, and then I boiled them in baking soda water. They were really good. They turned out pretty good. The reason this conversation came up is because when we got here, it smelled like something was burning and we were worried our camper was on fire and we were just driving around town with our camper <laughs> on fire. And then we're like, oh, no, there's hard pretzels too. And so I thought maybe maybe you have to like over bake pretzels to make them hard pretzels yeah. compared to soft pretzels. I don't know how you make pretzels. the hard ones. So that's what got us thinking like, oh, no, there's, there's ways of making pretzels. So maybe... To make the hard ones, you bake them after you boil them. Should we have taken the three dollar and seventy five? Yeah, maybe. Tour three dollar and seventy five cent tour, then we would know how pretzels are made. No. Oh well. It's okay. We're leaving Pretzel Town because we're going to. I almost said it. We're going to Delicious Town. We'll we'll see you there in a minute. Surprise! We're in the truck. <laughs> that was good. We're in Hershey, Pennsylvania, which can only mean one thing. What's in Hershey? Chocolate. Chocolate factory. <clears throat> we are going to go on the Hershey Chocolate Factory tour. And you know us, we don't usually spend money on tours. So the kind that we do spend money on are the ones that are free. And that's what this one is. It's free. Free. F-R-E-E-E-E-E. -E 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 -E. We love it. So we're going to go put the dogs up and then we're going to go take the tour. It's not a very long tour. Um, and we're not allowed to take our big camera in there. So I don't know what we're going to show you, but I'll show you what I can show you. And uh, yeah. we're going to have fun. And we're going to eat some chocolate. Ready? Ready. You know who's not ready? He's not. This guy. This guy. He doesn't get any chocolate, and he has to leave us for 15 minutes. No, I won't be happy. What do you think? I was a little disappointed with the chocolate factory. 
It really wasn't a factory. It was like a ride geared more towards kids. So if you have kids, great place to go. Because it really was. I mean, it was cool. We did learn stuff. informative. I learned about it. it they just, throw the cacao beans. They throw them. They shoot them. And they hit the wall. And they crack open. That's how they open the beans. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I thought that was awesome. They could have, like, crushed them by hand or whatever. But they, yeah. boom, blast them against a the wall. Like, who blasts cocoa beans against a wall? That's awesome. So, it was, <laughs> so we did learn something. It was informative. But it just wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. But the most important part about it for us is... It was free. It was free. So if you're in the area, why not stop by? Yeah. The, it the, was cool to see. The gift shop, however, was probably my favorite gift shop I've ever been in. It was like a kid being in a candy store. It was a candy store. I mean, it literally was a kid being in a candy store. It was a candy store. Literally. It was awesome. We were surrounded <laughs> by Reese's. And, uh, and we didn't buy any of we didn't, it. We didn't. How did that happen? I don't know, because they didn't have their little Reese's Easter eggs. If they had those, oh, I think you would They had the ghosts. Yeah. It's not an Easter time, I so. I know, but you're an Easter egg addict when it comes to the Reese's, so you and my mom. Mm -hmm. But we, um, we, we're leaving we're leaving Hershey, Pennsylvania. We have done a really quick tour of the Lancaster County Amish community. Mm -hmm. Um, there's definitely more on the south and eastern side, but I'll put on the map, more on the southeastern side of Lancaster than there was to the northeast, although that pretzel was pretty phenomenal, and we do know that. Oh, that, that little town was so cute. Yeah, it definitely is, um, but, but it's, it's, it's on the fringe of, of being Amish in the Amish community, so, um, so we did that. We did the quick excursion to Hershey. We looked on a map. We're like, oh, look, Hershey's like right there. Might Let's as well do go. that. So we Why did. Not? And so we, we got one more little not surprise, but one more little thing we're hoping to do. And then we're going to find a place to call it a night. And that yep. will be our Southern Pennsylvania tour because we have a bit of scrambling to do in the upcoming days. But right now, Southern Pennsylvania, I think, has been. I've loved Pennsylvania. In your so words, far. gorgeous. I really loved it. Gorgeous. It has been fantastic. It is beautiful. The people have been amazing. The, there's been hills. There's been a bit of color. We had some some good color some on the color drive today. today. Mm -hmm. um, it's just been it has been a surprise, I think, to see how beautiful it is. So put it on the map if you haven't already. From Harper's Ferry to Gettysburg to uh, Lancaster. Everywhere in between in the fall, at least, has been has been worthwhile. Super stoked we're here. Not super stoked we're still sitting here in the parking lot, however. So on that Let's get note. Going. So our last stop today before we go find a place to camp is the Bethlehem Steel Stacks in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Totally unique place to come and visit, especially if you have any um, recollection of what steel the steel industry used to be in the United States. This was uh, featured, we featured this in a documentary that I was a part of a couple years back, American Made Movie, and uh, so we got to come here, Lindsay and I, and I get to show her what she's only seen in a cell phone picture that I sent her a couple years back. You can walk up there? You can walk up there. So what they've done with the steel stacks is they've modernized a part of it, and then they've left the historic parts so it's that, um, you know, metaphorical old meets new, and it's really spectacular to see. The history of Bethlehem Steel, they've had some pretty awesome things that they've contributed to building, uh, from bridges to United States war carriers and ships to uh, famous buildings, and they've got it all memorialized here. And it's pretty cool to see. We found one from our hometown Jacksonville, the Matthews Bridge which is not a fun bridge to drive over. <laughs> if, you've ever, if you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever driven over the Matthews Bridge. No. I don't blame the steel workers for that. I blame whoever designed it.
So I'm going to wrap the day by talking a little bit about fear number four for me. So you may recall fear number one is choking on a stake. Fear number two is getting hit with a foul ball. Fear number three is driving off a bridge, at the top of the bridge. Fear number four is the toll road, especially in an out of state, uh, state situation. So because of that, and because we like the back roads, Lindsay and I have decided we were gonna use just Google Maps to get us from place to place with the no tolls option. And today ended up being a long day, as you kind of sort of know. We bounced around a lot. We ended up driving more than we thought we would. The last place we needed to get was the campground. Remember back when Lindsay so cheerfully said, we'll figure it out. And I was like, yeah, we'll figure it out. Well, we did figure it out. The problem is by not getting on the toll road to get there, we ended up on some back roads that took us up to the top of Mount Pocono. I'm pretty sure it was the top of Mount Pocono. If it wasn't the top, it was pretty darn close. The problem is that is the weakest point for us and our truck is the transmission getting hot, going uphill, and we ended up having to pull over because we had gone straight up this road. Um, no fun, no bueno. So we decide, okay, well, the toll road's okay. Let's figure out how to get back on the toll road, even though we have to go uphill some more. And we do that. We get to where the toll road is, and all of a sudden it says only easy pass holders can get on the toll road. And we don't have an easy pass. I know where to get one. I know I could borrow one from my dad if I needed to down in Florida, but we don't have one right now. So we pull over and we start researching and we scramble for like, I don't know, 10 minutes or so we're trying to figure out what the heck happens. Cause we can't go back on that road that we were on that almost broke our spirits and, you know, overheated the truck. We can't go backwards because that would mean going back on that road as well. We have to get on the toll road, but are they going to fine us a million dollars because we don't have an easy pass? So we researched it for a little while and then we said, you know what, we got to go, we got to do this. So we did it. We got on there. It was a nice toll road. Thank you, Pennsylvania. Beautiful toll road. I think it was 476 North, something like that. Took us between Allentown up toward Scranton. We are now just south of Scranton. We decided instead of staying at a beautiful state park in the middle of the mountains where the dogs would have all kinds of room to go explore, we could hike trails in the morning. We could do all kinds of amazing stuff. Instead, we decided to stay at a truck stop because that's what you do when one, you're living off of $40 a day, two, you're really stressed out, and three, you shouldn't be driving anymore anyway. So we took ourselves off the road, we're at a truck stop. You might be able to hear it. In fact, there's no fewer than 75 trucks scattered about in this area and they've all got their engines running or their generators running. So it's not gonna be the quietest night. We're not gonna wake up in the beautiful Pocono Mountains. Um, we're gonna wake up south of Scranton, off the side of the highway. And I'm only saying this and sharing this because as much fun as we've had today in the last couple of days, sometimes you end up with a today. And I don't even say a today. Lindsay, can you answer from back there? Would you say it's a today? It's not a today. It's a, t it's a right now, yeah. but today was a great day. It was a good day. I mean, aside from getting in the little teacup chocolate tour. <laughs> no, it was a really good day. It just, the last part was, the last part was not was, fun. Yeah. So we have kind of a, a rule, but we break it all the time. And that's don't drive at night and don't, don't try to force too much into the day. And that's what we did. We we're like, Oh, we could, and it was partly my fault. We got to, to Bethlehem and we were letting the dogs play and I was in no rush at all because it was a beautiful day the sun was shining there's nice lush grass for the dogs and I was in no rush to race the sunset to the camp spot should have been or we should have just camped in, in Bethlehem somewhere so to that end we know not to stress ourselves out and we did and it's advisable for you to think about that the longer your days are the chances of you getting a divorce go up. Um, and fortunately, there aren't divorce divorce attorneys following RVers around because there'd be a whole lot of divorces going on on a regular basis, if you know what I mean, because you've been in those situations. We are stressed out, but we're here, so we're decompressing. The dogs ate. We're going to climb in bed and fall asleep to the hum of the trucks coming in and out and in and out. I think tomorrow I need to get some nature and the dogs need some space to stretch their legs. So 
we're going to leave tomorrow and go north in some direction toward mountains or just green space. I, I don't like mountains at this point. But we're going to go find some green space and we're going to have a little bit more of a chill day. So you probably won't hear from us tomorrow. That's okay. We'll be back when we get back. If you've appreciated this video and all that we've tried to share with you about how to live this wonderful life on the road for $40 a day, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel if you've not done so. If you have, please like this video, unless of course you didn't like it, in which case please don't hit the down thumb, the thumbs down, um, because that's rude and I, I don't know who you are when you do that. If you leave a negative comment, that's cool, I know who you are and I can, you know, purge you from our site. <laughs> We have a positive comment. We love positive comments, questions, um, or send us an email. Whatever you want to do to get in touch with us, check out our Facebook page, send us a message. We'd appreciate hearing back from you if you have any questions about where we went, what we did today, how we would do it better, um, how you can do it better. Feel free to reach out to us. We appreciate interacting with you. Thanks again for watching this video and being a part of our journey. We will see you when we see you.